tight innings. Yeah, go. century he's fought it every bit of the way and every one of his mates is out on that balcony great innings Nashville Prince bringing up his hundred here at the Sydney Cricket Ground the New Year Test match one he won't forget can't forget these two faces g'day fellas <laughs> g'day Simon how are you mate if you don't know who they are that's Mark Taylor and that's Ian Healy hi everyone g'day fellas that's hi but uh, he, South Africans made it pretty hard for our bowlers at the minute They've done very well, haven't they? I, I thought yesterday when Australia lost the toss that they wouldn't have been overly disappointed about that. It moved around a bit, but they didn't get those early wickets. They they worked their way to three for 86, but then Callis and Prince took it away from them very quickly. Batted very well, got through the tough period, and both kicked on to good centuries today. Next session's going to be good though, Simon. I think they've got to kick on now. I think they've got to really uh, make some runs and, and either get out for 400, 450, or declare and uh, get this game ticking on. OK, uh, look forward to that during the afternoon. Now, let's get to uh, our emails. Always a hot topic of conversation. Keep them coming in to the cricket show. First one we're going to have a look at is from Dion from New South Wales. He's worried about our bowling. Thinks, uh, we look a bit thin. And uh, wonders if we took all the right options yesterday, uh, i.e. Hussey before McGill. Is that? Well, look, at the end of the day, when you pick two leg spinners, you, which, which we've done here for the SCG test, you make a judgment call. You think, OK, the leg spinners are going to be more useful than, say, a third seam. Now, when you lose the toss under overcast skies with a bit of moisture around, you think to yourself, geez, it'd be nice to have one more quick as it would have been for Australia yesterday. But you can't cover every option unless you've got someone like a, an Andrew Flintoff or a Keith Miller from Australia. Those cricketers only come round once every blue moon. We've been very lucky in this country that we've had Warren and McGrath for so long. Yesterday, yeah, sure, we missed the third seamer. But that's the way the game is. How do you see it here? Yeah, exactly. That we were thin yesterday because of that third seamer missing. But the great, to the great credit of the Aussies, they kept it tight and South Africa haven't got away on them. And, and the game is still in the balance. So they've done a good job. OK, Heels, keep the brain uh, ticking over a, a bit of wicket-keeping advice. Uh, not so much uh, in general, but for Adam Gilchrist, what advice would you give to poor Gilly right now? Do you think he needs to give one-day cricket a rest? That's from Luke Barton, a thinker on the game from Victoria. <laughs> yeah, Paul Gilly. Uh, <laughs> um, he's had a great career, and we expect a whole lot of, of Gilly. So uh, I, I saw Richie Benno gave him some advice the other day to keep the ball along the ground. That's a good start. Only Gilly will know exactly how he's travelling mentally. It, to me, his gloves look fine, uh, but it's just his batting intensity that has dropped off, and, and he hasn't used the chances he's been given with the bat. Uh, which he's been so expert at doing in the past. When Australia are five down, Gilchrist runs to the wicket and makes 100 a, a lot, and he's not doing that at the moment. So he'll know how he's travelling mentally, and he might have to step up his training a little bit or lay back his training a little bit, which brings into, into the equation the one-day game. 
you know, he, he'll know as well, does he want to give up one form of the game and which one it might be. So he's just either got to freshen up uh, by training more or less. Any and thoughts, Tom? The only problem with giving up one form of the game, as a few of us had to do in our careers, is that it can be a way out. All of a sudden you're out of one form of the game and before you know it, you're struggling in the form that you're left with and it would be test cricket for Adam Gilchrist. You struggle a bit and then the selectors find a reason to drop you out of that. So I'm not so sure that's the way Adam Gilchrist was, would be going. Look, Adam Gilchrist, as Ian Healy rightfully says, has been a fine player, a fine aggressive player. But when you hit that many balls in the air, you're going to have a run of outs. This is his year. Maybe he could bat down the order in one day cricket. That could be the next, next step. Bat down the order, take a bit of pressure off himself. Who knows? OK, fellas, we face plenty of serious issues here on the future. We're facing another one today, very serious. Um, the guys where Tim Burr works want to know why there aren't any cheer girls at the cricket, because every other sport seems to have them. Oh, I think it's terrible. I totally agree Me with too. you. Me too. It'd be certainly, certainly nice to have a few of them, wouldn't it? But <laughs> I, I, it's interesting. We've got to, uh, I want to be fit. Yeah, well, we've got a 2020 over match at the Gabba on January 9. That, there might be an avenue for the cheer girls in in future years. Actually, yeah, perhaps the girls should get a cricket show emblazoned and, and sit in a group like the Boonies do at the test matches, and there it is. Cheer I wonder, girls. I wonder girls. what cricket cheer girls will look like. Will they be the athletic types of, uh, you know, like the football ones, or will they resemble David Boone, maybe, Mark Taylor? Who knows? <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> but, well, they've got to be fit. They've got to go six or seven hours. Well, well that's exactly why they haven't been around. You know, that they... they there's no, no time for breaks and you've got to go seven hours probably and uh, as we've got today a long day out here in test cricket the girls would have no chance amazing how we handle all the hard-hitting issues here on the cricket show okay um ben carter he's 30 years of age he sends us this uh, email do any of the bowlers especially shane Warne and stuart mcgill have a secret signal they give to gilly so he knows what the next delivery will be no, they don't, and there's no need for that because, uh, you know, Warren and McGill are both very readable out of the hand, so uh, Gilly doesn't need an extra signal. Um, it's not like baseball where the ball's going 90 feet, or it might be 60 feet in the air, and the bat's swinging through and the keeper's got to catch it on the full with late swing. So, you know, the, uh, Gilly's got 20 metres, the ball bounces. If he hasn't seen it out of the hand, he can still watch the ball in the air to see if he can pick up the seam, or then he can watch it off the pitch, and he's only a defender. The batsman's the one that's got to score off it and attack it. Um, so. So there's no need for any signals at all. Tommy, if I can just add another verse to that. As captain, Captain Australia is standing there at first step, were you ever the type of captain that may give some sort of signal to the bowler to suggest what may come next? No, I didn't like to do that either. I think you pick your players, whether it's a fast bowler or a spin bowler, they're picked because they do something very special that you can't do. So I reckon you let them do what they have to do. Uh, I've got to give my mate here on my, on my right a rap, which is very rare for me on the cricket show, but <laughs> Ian Healy was one of the best wicket keepers of all time because he could read Shane Warne out of the hand, and he worked very hard at it. Heels had come down to the nets here with Shane Warne and work on him, watch him bowl, watch every ball out of the hand, the subtle changes between that and that for the flipper and this for the wrong, and all these subtle changes were read by Ian Healy so he could actually move his feet and his glove work to uh, take Shane Warne's uh, deliveries. That's what Adam Gilchrist does, and that's what separates the really good keepers from the excellent ones. OK, uh, our next question, an interesting one in particular with uh, Brett Lee being reported today, and he'll uh, face the match referee after play tonight. Do you feel it's a good idea to introduce a yellow-red card foul system in cricket, as there is in soccer? Now, I must admit, I'm a bit of a fan because I, I think it's good to... Uh, get that warning system going and uh, make sure that players adhere to it. But here's, we were talking a little earlier and you said there's something sort of, it's really operating a bit that way now. Sort of, and the, the game is doing everything it can to take the immediate pressure off umpires. So yesterday the umpires could sit together after a match and say, yeah, yeah, I think it was bad enough to warrant a report. Not do it in the heat of the moment where the crowd are involved and there's replay after replay and give that red card or a yellow card or whatever. But uh, So I think it's sort of there now. Like uh, last night the umpires conferred, they reported it to the referee who's going to talk to Brett Lee today and decide whether it's a red card or a yellow card, basically. Now, the system is in place that if you create it, and what, it, what he's been reported for is a level one offence, relatively minor, yeah. uh, and if he repeats that, he'll get a more serious punishment. There's a whole list of punishment and uh, uh, consequences for the offences that are, uh, you know, reportable. Think it works all right the way it is, Tom? I think it works quite well. And I think, I like the Ian's call about taking the heat out of the situation. If you show a player a yellow or red card after they've uh, showed some dissent on an umpire decision. 
you may inflame the situation, make it a lot worse than potentially it is. Fellas, thanks for that. Uh, stay with us because uh, something that's very close to both your hearts is coming up after the race. Yeah, the Sydney Cricket Ground, well, just lob up here, order the bat you want, the size you want it, the weight you want it, and it can be made, so, uh, oh, it's never ceased to amaze me. Here we are at a test match in Sydney, and you can come and get a custom-made cricket bat all for yourself. Uh, arrive with none and go home with one. Now, fellas, uh, I, I spoke before the break uh, about something that's very close to your heart. There's division, and always has been within the Australian team, because, um, there's two divisions in the Australian team, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. There's Julio's and there's nerds. And then there's us nerds. <laughs> us nerds. But what I, were you, Heels? I was a nerd. I was the vice captain of the nerds in my time, but borderline, borderline, they reckon. Were you skipper of the nerds? I was skipper of the nerds, and what concerned me is exactly what Ian Healy's alluding to there, is that some guys didn't really know where they sat. Ian Healy is a Julio. He carries on like a Julio, he wears all the fancy gear, and he wants to be a nerd. Then we had other people, like Glenn McGrath, who was a walk-up start nerd, and yet spends all his time these days dyeing his hair, trying to stay young, trying to be a Julio. I think you've got, to, you've got to make a decision in this life and say, I'm either one or the other. Some of us found it easy, others fence it us. Well, there's different criteria, Mark. You, you know, the, the nerds are considerate, hard-working, you know, not as natural as the pretty Julios, you know. The, Simon being team of the century, vice-captain for the Julios knows all about that, but the pretty ones are on his side. Well, what I can tell you is rumour has it there's been a change in the pecking order. Today we go behind the baggy green and find out more about the Julios and the Nerds. I think deep down they all want to be Julios. I mean, we've got McGrath, who's king of the Nerds, dyeing his hair now. Um, so you can't dye your hair and be a nerd. Ponting wears his collar up and all that sort of stuff. And he's got the U-Butte gear, so I'm not sure he can be a nerd anymore either. 
Adam Gilchrist switches from both sides depending on the numbers in the team. And now, I mean, come on. The nerds are really struggling at the moment, so they need maybe a few other nerds to come in. I'm well and truly a nerd. There's no uh, no doubt in that. Uh, the, the swing voters are uh, our captain at the moment, Ricky Ponning, and our vice captain, Adam Gilchrist. So they are dark horses. Well, Ricky's definitely on the cusp, and um, he tries to keep saying that he's a nerd, but I think he's on the, the Julio side. And Adam Gilchrist, def definite Julio. He, he's got the top top gear, got the top kit. Still tries to think that he's a nerd, but um, a definite Julio. I think we're all still very, very much nerds, but we've just managed to nudge in front of the Julio's in regards to fashion and, and, and what's contemporary and, and current. Punters, yeah, he's, he's, his dress standards have improved massively over the last couple of years, eh? and he's, um, you know, he's looking after himself pretty well and lives in a flash part of town, but um, I think it's probably just due to, due to the fact that he's running a place and to stuff his cash. I, I love writing, I love reading. Mate, I don't drive a fancy car, so I'm proudly one of the nerds. Ricky Ponning's starting to really step up a bit, mainly due to his wife, I think. I don't, don't think she lets him out of the house um, looking the way he used to. Well, the simple fact is that, you, you know, a pest is often a very good sign that you're a nerd. Um, that's why Glenn McGrath's obviously captain and coach of the side. Um, Ricky, I think, is genuinely a nerd, um, although he's desperately no, he actually wants to stay a nerd, but the boys are, you know, tending to promote him. Yeah. Once you're a nerd, you're a nerd. Yeah. I've, uh, I've been in the Julio side, I guess, now for a year or uh, 18 months, something like that. I think my wife's got a lot to do with that. She uh, she buys most of my clothes these days. and I got moved over because she bought me a pair of white runners, a pair of white diesel runners to, to wear out with my jeans, and that was the, the reason that I got changed over. But um, that was done by our fitness trainer, Jock Campbell, at the time. He's moved on now, so I'm doing my absolute best to get back into the nerds. Yeah, you don't need uh, any more proof that there is a division in the Australian team. First time I have ever heard that someone can go from a nerd to a Julio because of their wife. No, well, that's right. These, these are the criteria we're talking about. Is it gear? Is it looks? Is it uh, the, w the way someone cares about others? You, you know, Ricky Ponding, to me, as well as Adam Gilchrist, care too much about the other people around them, so that keeps them in the nerd category. Julios don't care about anyone. They are so inconsistent. They do care about people. They care about themselves. Sorry, they? sorry, that's right. That's, that's right. right, that's exactly right. The other worrying thing for me, watching those clips there, is that the nerds are dying, aren't they? They're dying off. There seems to be a real um, Julio uh, flood of players coming in. They all want to be Julios. They want to be Shane Warnes. Shane Watson's almost a clone. That's a worry. Ricky Ponning and Glenn McGrath, you need to go back to your, to your basics, back to your roots as human beings and become out and out nerds. We are a dying breed. He's a very confused man, Glenn McGrath doesn't know what colour to have his hair at the moment. He's, uh, he's going through a midlife crisis as we take a break on the cricket show.
Well, the two nerds have left the building, Tubby and Heels, gone to have their lunch. I'm going to join them in just a moment. Of course, I'll be in an air-conditioned restaurant and they're downstairs. But I just wanted to let you know what's coming up tomorrow. Cleo centrefold for January. Shane Watson live on the Cricket Show and also a masterclass. All for you tomorrow. Look forward to your company then. Bye for now. You're watching Nine's Wide World of Sports. third test at the SCG moving along uh, steadily for South Africa four for 310 Jack Callis the only man out uh, in that first session he was out for 111 Ashwell Prince very important century